G'day folks, it's the Motor Ad Rider again and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to take you through a little bit of maintenance that is not in the BMW service schedule on the R1200 and 1250 GS GSAs. That bit of maintenance is lubricating the final drive splines. There has been issues previously um, and it's, you can find it on, on the internet, of drive shafts rusting up, um, splines rusting up, causing hard gear changes and all that sort of stuff. So I thought today I'd take you through my uh, method of lubricating the spine, splines and hopefully you'll get something out of it. So stay tuned. Right, with this um, lubrication of the splines, it's been documented on the internet that um, the splines can rust up even after just a few thousand miles or kilometres, particularly if you live in a, a harsh environment, for example, where they salt the roads and things like that, or if you do a lot of river crossings and hard off-road stuff. Uh, the splines can actually rust up to the point where they are very, very difficult to free up. So the idea of this video is to give you an idea on what's involved in disassembling the final drive so that you can access the splines and lubricate them properly. What I also suggest is that you watch the video through its entirety because if you're not necessarily au fait with, with using spanners and doing your own maintenance, you may or may not feel that this is too much for you. So hence, working your way through the video in its entirety to make sure that you can do it and that you also have the tools to do the same. So here we go, eyes down, let's get into it. Folks, before I go any further with this, I just thought I'd show you a bit of a safety precaution that I think you should take when doing anything like this. I've just secured the front wheel to the centre stand because if you inadvertently move the bike, nudge the bike, the bike can actually roll forward off that centre stand and you really don't want 250-300 kilos of German engineering sitting on top of you. It's very painful, I would imagine. Not that I've ever done it, but I'm just suggesting that that would be uh, a security measure for you to, to consider. So I'm just going to mount the camera back up on the tripod and we'll get straight back into it. As you can see, I've uh, removed the wheel to make life easier. The bolts that hold the wheel on are T50s, so make sure you've got a tool for that. And we're going to remove this speed sensor, and the speed sensor sits right there, and that feeds the information back to the computer for the ABS. So we'll just take that out. Don't lose it, it's T30. Now, if you're gonna change the, the diff oil, or the, the final drive oil, it's no great issue, but I'm not, uh, because I've recently done an oil change on the final drive. So there's no point in me ditching it just to, to I know it's only 180 mil, but it's, there's no point in just wasting it. So I'm gonna re remove this speed sensor and just get that out of the way there. There we go. Okay, and I'm gonna, I made this little plug up. It's, um, it's got a little screw in the back of the, the head of it, so I don't even, I can't remember where I got it from, but you can make up a piece of dowel or anything like that if you, um, if you don't want to drain the diff oil out or the final drive oil out. So I'm just going to push that into the hole there, like that, so when the, when the final drive drops down, because it's going to drop down that way, hopefully that will stop the oil from running out, hopefully. So 
I'm just going to go around to the other side of the swing arm and show you some more of what to remove. Next, we're going to remove the three T30 bolts that hold on the rear guard here. So we'll get into that. They shouldn't be too tight. So that's one. Slacken that off. Okay, just hold on to that. The three bolts, the three T30s are the same. And just remove and put to one side the guard. Okay, there's the, the speed sensor there. So what we're going to do is, the next thing is to remove the caliper bolt and make sure that you have something to support the caliper with. You don't, you don't leave it hanging on the brake line or the, or the ABS or speed sensor line. You've got to make sure that it's supported. So I've got some um, baler twine which I'm going to set up and that should be sufficient to give that some support. So I'm going to set that up and we'll go from there. Next job is to remove that bolt and that bolt, that bolt there. They're both T40s and they hold the brake caliper on. And as I said before, uh, you need to support the brake caliper when it comes off. So we're just going to crack that out and we just make sure that's Crack this one. These are reasonably tight. Uh, I'll give you the torque settings for these bolts when we're actually putting everything back together. And I've just, I don't know whether you can see it there, but I've just unclipped the speed sensor from this little wire tag just here on the para the paralever bolt okay just unclip that one bolt and two bolts One caliper. Okay. So we'll just put so that's up and out of the way. doesn't come undone, which it won't. Just put a double knot in it because I don't want it coming down on my hand or anything like that. So that's strung up and out of the way. The two bolts can stay in there. The speed sensor bolt I put back into the final drive housing so we don't lose it. And when this is reassembled we'll need to be putting um, a medium grade Loctite onto these threads in the caliper. Okay, so the next thing to do is get the T50 and get ready to undo the paralever bolt. I'm just going to undo this paralever bolt and it's pretty tight so I've used a, a small breaker bar just to make life a little bit easier. This is, as you're probably aware, this paralever bolt has to be pretty tight. Now I could use a ratchet as well, but I'm just taking it nice and steady. The other thing too that you've got to realise is that once this 
bolt is loose, then you've got to support the final drive, otherwise it's going to go crash into the down, crash into the ground. Now I've put that rubber pad down. You can probably, see, you might not be able to see it, but you'll see it in a sec. And it's just in case, because I don't want any damage done to anything. I'm just going to, I'm just going to swap this breaker bar for a ratchet and we should be a bit better off. Next, that's good. Just unscrewing that right out. And I'm taking the weight, hopefully, of this final drive. look pretty good and I'm going to take the camera off the tripod and I'll show you inside there it's actually very very good very very clean which I'm very very happy about needless to say clean that off there okay so I'll take the camera off the off the tripod and let you have a look in and hopefully you can see in there, everything's looking pretty good. It's a painted, sorry for the bit of the camera shake. It's a painted shaft and everything in there. So there is very little, or in this case, there's a little tiny, tiny little bit of rust on a nut in there, a lock nut. But apart from that, all I'm going to do is grease those splines, which I'm trying very hard for you to see, those splines there. And um, yep, we'll be putting it back together. Right, well what I did, I cleaned up the splines, I used some uh, isopropyl alcohol on a cloth just to get any dirt and grot that was in there off. There was no rust, so um, that, was, that was really good news. And this is a 2018 bike, and obviously BMW have taken on board the various complaints that people have been putting in about rusted drive shafts and splines and all that sort of stuff because this one, as you can see, has got a painted finish. So I'm very, very lucky there. So I've used molybdenum disulfide grease on the splines. It's a grease that I've used for years and years on drive shafts on cars and trucks. So I really don't believe that it's going to be any different or, or you know, it's not going to cause any problems in this particular scenario. The beauty with the grease is that it leaves a coating of molybdenum disulfide if the carrier grease moves away. You've, you've still got this nice lubrication going on. So we're going to now put this back together 
And the easiest way I think you can do it is just make sure these mating surfaces for this gator are as clean as they can be, or the boot, whatever you want to call it. And you get a piece of wire like this, soft wire, and you thread it through the uni joint, like so. And what that allows you to do is pick up the uni joint like that. And you can then lift up, let's try and get out of the way of the camera. You try and you lift up the unit like that and start wriggling. Now, it would be handy if human beings had three hands, but as soon as we don't, we've just got to make do. Now you just keep wriggling this and turning it ever so slightly until you feel it notch in. Now it might take a little while and it is a little bit fiddly, but you will get it and you'll know exactly like that that it's gone in. And if you're in any doubt, just turn the brake rotor slightly like that and you'll see the wire move. So that's how easy it is to put back in. Do not forget to take the wire out. That's why it's in red. So we just ease that in and we get the bolt that has been cleaned up and you pull that paralever shaft down as best as you can. As I say, you really do need three hands to do this. Now I've just got that sitting in there like that. Now, what I'm now gonna do is run some lithium grease around there. It's the white lithium grease that looks like that. Okay, and you just, you don't have to go quite as overboard as I've just done because it goes everywhere, as you can see. So I'm just gonna, I'll put that in. Yes, I could have probably put the, the grease on before I put the gator on, but what the heck. So you just ease those tabs that are on there under. It's a little bit of an effort, but we'll get there. So that should be in. Yes, it looks a mess, but we're going to wipe all of that off. That's going to basically be the sealer. So I'll get that all cleaned off and we'll get back into it. Okay, I just pushed the brake caliper out of the way for a sec. Now I've cleaned this bolt off and put some medium grade thread lock on there. One suggestion that I have for you, it's not mentioned anywhere, but this surface on the, the paralever, I've just put a, a very, very thin coating on the inside of this, this shaft here on the, on the bearing surfaces. I've just put a very, very thin coating of molly grease on there, the same grease that I used on the splines. So it's there as a preventative measure. It, it doesn't say do it, it doesn't say don't do it. It's a very, very thin smear. It can't do any harm. It just helps with any potential corrosion. It keeps everything moving nicely that it, when it has to. So that's my suggestion. And all we're gonna do now is put everything back together. And hopefully it's going to go back together. I'll see if we can get this to go in the right direction, which it's not going to. So we'll do this up and I'll get this sorted out and we'll then go to put the, the brake caliper back on and we'll go from there. Okay, I'm gonna fit the, the caliper back on and hopefully it should just drop on like that. Put that 
stainless clip plate on. The bolts have been cleaned up and a little bit of medium strength threaded thread lock have been put on there. And we'll just put that one in. Wriggle them into place. And then I'll get these screwed up and we'll get straight back. Okay, I'm just gonna torque up this paralever bolt. And that is 56 Newton meters. I just changed sockets and we'll torque up the brake calipers. And the brake caliper bolts are 24 Newton meters. We've also got to do that speed sensor bolt at the back. And the speed sensor bolt is five Newton meters. It is not very tight at all. So if you haven't got a torque wrench that goes down to that, then you just need to snug it, okay? So that's what we've got there at the moment. So I'm just gonna get change the, the, T, the torques over to do the, the brake calipers, which are T40s. And then we'll put the, the mud guard on the back and we're pretty much done. Well folks, that was it for the disassembly and reassembly and lubrication on the final drive on the bike. Hopefully you got something out of it. And if it's the first bit of maintenance that you've done on the bike yourself, because um, you're new to the bikes or you're new to doing your own maintenance, good on you, well done. It's a challenge and it was, it was worth it for you. You'll save yourself a lot of money and you'll feel better for doing it. At least you'll know the bike a little bit better too. One thing I will show you is the mat that I used underneath the final drive when I dropped it down. As it turns out, I didn't need it. It was the first time I'd actually dropped the, the final drive on this particular bike and I wasn't sure on the clearance that the final drive would have from the ground when it was actually disconnected from the drive shaft. So I used this in precaution. Fortunately, I didn't need it. What I'd suggest you do, if you have a lowered bike or you're running or you're doing the maintenance on an RT or a K-series bike, I would probably um, have a mat, a thick towel sheet, thick sheet or blanket or something underneath it, just in case that if you do inadvertently let go of the drive when it's unbolted from the paralever, that if it does drop, it's not going to do any damage to itself. At the end of this, you'll also find I've included torque settings in a list, um, the greases that I used, and hopefully you will have gotten something out of it. So if you have, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next video. So thanks so much for watching and see you next time.